All right, so we've done the Carlos, Sinnoh, and Unova League, so why not take our talents to the islands, man, yeah! Ash and the gang arrive at the stadium, and Ash is geeked at the moment. Like, you can tell he's ready to box. Now everyone's just going around, chatting, and getting to know the place. And this is where we see Team Skull plotting to ruin the league. Why? Because their boss is a D1 hater. Like, he literally has a degree in hateology. It's so bad. They tried to mess with the OG haters. Like, who do they think they are? These three have been getting more work done than your favorite evil team since 05. Put some respect on their name. After all the characters get reintroduced and this little skirmish between Ash and Team Skull, we learn a little bit more about Guzma. Turns out, he just sucks. <laughs> no, seriously. He couldn't keep up with Hala's teachings and got jealous that Kakui could. So he threw a fit and ran off. So he's just a baby. Now not only is the main goal to win the league, it's also to prevent Guzma from ruining it. So the stakes are high. Later on it's revealed that the preliminaries are a battle royale, which means everyone gonna get it. Could you just imagine if they did something like this in the games? A tournament format like Gen 8 but instead of the first round being a battle, it's a battle royale and you can just run around and fight people? Hey I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyway, league starts and everyone gets cracking. Off rip, this dude was like, Hey, can nobody in this hole with me, man? Then got triple teamed. Torko got hit with its own flamethrower. Pikachu one tapped the Sudowoodo, then knocked out a Polyrath and Arachnid. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's there than me! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Yahweh and Lily team up to take out the Salamence. Mallow and Lana got this nice triple kill, hashtag girl power, you know what I'm saying? Sophocles is doing Sophocles things, and Pikachu gets double teamed, but they saw what happens when he messed with the GOAT. After a couple more battles and interactions, the final 16 are set. I got a question. Matter of fact, three. How? Why? What the hell? How did y'all make it? Ash and Kiawe, I understand. Them two stay in the lab. But how did the rest of y'all make it? There's no way no one saw Lily and thought, hmm, this should be an easy knockout. Get out of here. Alright, so I'm gonna speed run through some of these because they're just one on ones and they're not really that important. Well, I mean, they kind of are, but they kind of aren't. Anyway, <clears throat> Meltan was more focused on the pendulum than the actual battle, then one tapped Hitno with a flash cannon, which really doesn't make any sense when you think about it. Guzma pretty much just said, Frick you and all the pretty boys who be stealing other people's girls. I ain't gonna lie, Guzma a real ninja for that one. Raichu packs up Executor. Mallow almost called it quits, but Zarina was like, Nuh uh, girl, I ain't done yet. Then Lana was like, Bestie, Bestie. Come on, bestie. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Then claps her anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sophocles versus Amina. Nothing special. Jesse versus James. Jesse would have won if she knew how to use Wobbuffet correctly. Stupid. Kiawe versus Acerola. Marowak said, hold on, give me one sec. <laughs> and Lily versus Gladion. <laughs> okay, final eight. They kind of went back and forth on the James versus Gladion battle and dedicated it to being a Rowlet training episode. Why? Ash vs. How begins pretty simple. Now you Never mind, I take that back. So already Ash was using his Z move and was surprised when it didn't work. Nah, bro, that's all on you. The Sijuai locked up Rowlet, literally, then hit him with his own Z move, which Rowlet barely avoids. What kind of tomfoolery am I watching right now? Now they actually start taking it seriously. This is why he's trying to land a hit on Rowlet, but since Rowlet is just that guy, he couldn't, you know what I'm saying? They go at each other for a little bit, then Rowlet gets hit pretty hard and barely escapes a leaf blade. Then they have a Brave Bird Sky Attack Collision, which they both take a lot of damage from. This is why is the first to get up, and since Rowlet was still down, everyone assumes that it was unable to battle. So like everyone, I was in panic mode. <laughs> There's no way they just pulled a Joel and beat on us, right? But what if I told you? Y'all were severely mistaken. So despite being all the way in the stands, Hala was like, I y'all listen, upon further review, Rowlet can still battle, he's just asleep. Huh? Ah! Ball the clock! What? Oh, hell nah. Do you see what I look like right now? Do you see what I look like right now? Do you see what I look like right now? You can't even open your eyes, dog. Wake your ass up, boy! <laughs> Alright, so the battle resumes and Rowlet gets caught in Spirit Shackle for like the third time, but this time he successfully escapes using Feather Dance, then finishes Decision White off with Brave Bird. A. A win is a win. A win is a win. I don't care what y'all say. Nah, but what's even crazier is that Hala, who is his grandfather, mind you, went to the back and told him straight up, hey man, don't worry about it. Like, what? That's like cheating on somebody and telling them, hey, you did your best, don't worry about it. 
if I ever get a girl and she pulls one of those on me, it's see you later, bro. I'm off the grid. We get this heartfelt scene between Kiawe and Sophocles, you know what I'm saying? Hashtag broskies. The battle starts, and at first, I thought Kiawe was going to walk all over Sophocles, but I guess I got to give my man an apology. He might actually have that dog in him for real. But Kiawe is just bigger, so he won the match. Finally, it was Guzma versus Lana, and... For the semifinals, we have Kiawe versus Gladion and Ash versus Guzma. Here we got Kiawe who loves his little sister a little too much, which I get, but then they grow up and make you question your parents' decision to even have them in the first place. I'm speaking from personal experience. After Team Skull threatens to assault a little girl, I'm not kidding by the way. Oh, we don't pull punches when anyone gets cheeky with us. Lock his ass up. Lock his ass up. You going to jail. The battle begins. First, we got Marowak versus Lycanroc. Marowak was getting tossed around like your average tree, then said, screw it. But then Gladion was like, got your ass. Kiawe sends out his Turtonator, then smacked this dude with his tail. Lycanroc used outrage, but Turtonator said, ah, I got an itch in my back. Can you get it for me? But that didn't matter anyway, because once Lycanroc started looking like this, <laughs> game over. Bro got in his bag and started swinging, served him a pack of punches. Then it got taken out by Focus Blast. Tough. Gladion sends out Silv Ally, then both him and Kiawe start glazing Ash heavy. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't never seen a 10 year old or however old he is at this point get this much praise before. When I was 10, the most amount of praise I got was a gold star. Kiawe tries to end the battle with his Z move, but Gladion changed Silv Ally into a fire type as it was about to get hit in order to withstand the attack. What? And what's even more confusing is that everyone in the stadium was like, whoa, ah, that's so cool. But not one person in there was like, hold on, ain't that cheating? Anyway, Gladion delivers the final blow, winning the match. Now we got Ash versus Guzma. Ash tries to get the quick knockout, but Scizor was like, hey bro, sub in. Then Golisopod came out. Golisopod then speed blitzes towards Torcat and hits him with liquidation. Torcat had enough and said, all right, time to lock in now. Then started going crazy. He really liked that. He uses Fire Blast and Galassipod was like, Bye bye! Huh? BOOM BAKLA! Hey, Galassipod really L mans for that, not gonna lie. What's even funnier is that Ash and Torcat had the same facial expression, like, damn, he really just did his mans like that? So because of that, Guzma starts tweaking, like, bro, calm down, it's not that serious. He's on 10 for a situation that's like a 5. Galassipod made easy work out of Torcat, so now it's time for Pikachu. The entire first half of this fight was just Guzma trying to convince Ash to quit, while also getting his ass handed to by him, which leads into us learning that the reason why Guzma is thought to be this unstoppable trainer is because he only takes battles he knows he'll win and will gaslight you into quitting if you're about to beat him but unfortunately for guzma ash has been at this for way too long for someone to just talk him out of it now ash tries to finish the battle with a z move but thanks to the power of never giving up glassipod holds on and guzma was like <laughs> if that's how you want it then fine come at me now. pikachu put his crocs into sports mode and turned into prime d rose dodging everything then glycopod uses poison jab but pikachu activated his light skin abilities after an epic standoff glycopod falls and ash moves on to the finals after the battle ash's mom and professor oak show up to support ash in the finals then Meltan calls in his bros and they start doing this little ritual dance that turns him into a freaking unit oh my gosh now the finals have officially begun i don't know about y'all but i feel a little tingly inside Gladion sends out Silv Ally and Ash sends out big boy Mel Metal. Now since Mel Metal is the literal equivalent to a man child, he ain't got no cognitive motor skills, so he's just moving around. The only two words he knows is his own name and destroy. He gets a good hit to the body, then hits Silv Ally with flash cannon, but Gladion's cheating ass knocked it out, so. Next up is that boy Pikachu, ready to clock in and cook. Pikachu uses quick attack and Silv Ally dodges it. Bro must have thought he was Goku doing that. Calm down, buddy. He was not, not him. That guy. Pikachu hits the dash, then throws an Electro Whip at the corner of the battlefield, then uses that same Electro Whip to catapult himself into Silv Ally for the KO. <laughs> hey, man, I try to tell him. I try to tell him he's the son of Arceus for a reason. Gladion sends out Lycanroc, but it ain't Lycanroc. It's just Zoroark playing dress up. He gives Pikachu a clean uppercut, got him on the floor looking discombobulated. He hits him again, then tries to finish him off with a Z move. Gladion says it's impossible to escape Never Ending Nightmare, and Ash took that and said, Impossible? <laughs> Bet. So Ash uses Breakneck Blitz and shuts the whole thing down, which ended in a double knockout. 
Finally, it's Like Your Rock versus Like Your Rock. Big Bro vs Little Bro, the battle that decides whether Ash gotta start this whole process over again. Both of them start off strong, but Lycanroc Rock took a hard hit to the stomach. They both start going band for band, then Lycanroc Rock hits a speed blitz punch. Got this man Lycanroc Rock looking like he bout a plie. Lycanroc Rock gets confused and starts biting himself, bro think he gonna turn into a titan. Ash tries to take advantage of Lycanroc Rock being confused, but that backfired horribly. Then Lycanroc Rock was like, you know what, I have had enough of this. Come here! Like a rock makes a beeline towards Like a Rock, but gets hit in the jaw. Is this the end? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! He actually did out. He actually did it! He beat the allegations! Oh my goodness! He beat the allegations! I remember I was in my bed on a Saturday morning and I damn near fell off! Look at Ash, even he couldn't believe what just occurred! Damn, I really just beat the allegations. Is it my birthday or something? And yeah, Ash is the Alola champion. After all the times he got hoed, he finally did it. Then a Guzz Lord just pulls up out of nowhere and starts doing stuff. What's funny about this scene is that in the English dub, he sounds like how he looks. A big alien monster. But in the Japanese dub, he sounds like he just got sucked into a portal and didn't know where he just ended up. So he's like... <laughs> then two other Guzz Lord pulled up. Don't really know why they need to be here. So with the help of the Tapus, everybody uses their Z moves to get the Guzz Lords back through the wormholes. And the entire time they're just doing Z moves. Like sitting through this is probably one of my greatest feats. That and watching a morph sequence from Power Rangers Samurai. Oh my lord, y'all do not know patience until y'all seen one of those. Anyway, Poi Poi comes back and the mask world secret has been revealed. Everybody was in shock, but Professor Burnett was fuming. She looked like she just saw Michael B. Jordan, Chris Hemsworth, and Tom Holland tooted up on a Sunday evening with maid outfits. Where was I going with that? Now it's time for the exhibition match. Ash leads with Torcat and Kakui leads with Incineroar. So off rip, they're bringing the heat. Torcat starts with Flame Charge, but Incineroar eats that no problem. Then Torcat uses Flame Charge again, this time getting past Incineroar, but he got smacked in the process. So he used Flame Charge again. Yo, what's up with Ash using the same move over and over again? But this time he's running circles around Incineroar, which ends up with him getting smacked again. Torcat uses Fire Blast, which Incineroar eats again. Damn, this guy's a beast. So Incineroar uses Blast Burn. Ah, uh, not this move again. I got mad PTSD from seeing this move. But since Torcat got that dog in him, or cat, I don't really know what you call it. He rang the bell and ate that Blast Burn. Chow down on it. Bro looked like he was ready to cook, but then bro got smacked. Damn, man. Ash switches to his Lycanroc and since Incineroar can't move after using Blast Burn, it was just free hits all day. Then he turns into Tanjiro the way he sliced up Incineroar. Kukui sends out his Braviary and uses Rock Slide. Then Lycanroc starts playing tennis and returned it to Sender. Braviary then drops Lycanroc from the air and he just stood up and was like, is that all you got? Okay, talk to him. Never mind. Rowlet comes out and turns into Prime Clay Thompson with the catch and shoot, then finishes him with a Brave Bird. Next is Venusaur. Rowlet uses Brave Bird but gets caught in Venusaur's flower. Venusaur's about to light him up, but at the last second, Rowlet barely makes it out. But Venusaur was quick to shut that down. Ash sends Torcat back out and cooks Venusaur medium well. So Kakubi sends out Empoleon and Ash sends Pikachu out. Empoleon cuts through Electro Web and starts going band for band with Pikachu. Then puts him in a spin cycle. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. Ash switches to Melmetal, who actually did something this time. Empoleon uses Hydro Pump, which Melmetal deflects. Empoleon tries to put Melmetal in a spin cycle, but since Melmetal is the greatest defensive player on the team, he didn't even budge. Got Empoleon looking like, yo, nothing's working, bro. Sub me out, please. Then he got flown across the stadium. Uh, uh, hey, yo. Kukui sends out Incineroar and starts doing spin jitsu, then uses Blast Burn in a weird way. Okay, whose idea was it to make Incineroar's fire come out of his belt? You're not slick. Next was Lucario versus Naganado. Ash makes the dumb decision to use Sludge Bomb against a Lucario of all Pokemon. Luckily, Naganado's reaction time came in clutch because that Dragon Pulse would have ended it right there. Lucario tries to use close combat, but Naganado shuts that down. Then Lucario spears Naganado to the ground and stands on him. Good lord. Both of their Dragon Pulses collide, then Naganado goes in for the X Scissor. Lucario blocks it, but Naganado loads up the Blick and was like, You thought I was just gonna let you disrespect me like that? Well, think again. It hit him with a Dragon Pulse from point blank range and hits his signature Selby. Yeah, that's how you get 
to get back Naganado. Now it's Incineroar versus Torcat. They have this intense stare off, then just start getting active. Torcat knocks Incineroar off balance, then hits him in the chest. Then follows it up with Fire Fang, but Incineroar knocked him back. Then he said, hold on, check out this pump real quick, and took Torcat's Fire Blast to the chest. Bro, out here looking like Arnold. Torcat then goes off. Hit Incineroar with a 4 hit combo, but Incineroar didn't let that slide. He grabbed bro by the head and hit him right in his neck, which I expected. Look at how he's looking at him right now. I knew something crazy was coming next. Then Torcat turns into Magma? I don't know. Then was like, you thought I was going to let you hold me like that? Well, take this, you bipedal freak! Then Incineroar turns into Magma also. I don't know how that works. But Torcat turns into even darker Magma, and they both have an Inferno Overdrive collision. Then they both go into their Z moves and cause whatever the hell this was. Everybody in the stadium gotta have dust in their eyes or something. They stare each other down, then Incineroar falls. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I like to see. And then Torcat uses the rest of his energy to evolve into Incineroar. Man, I wish I could dab this man up right now. As Kakubi was about to send out his last Pokemon, Tapu Koko pulls up and wants all the smoke. You could tell it was serious when he smacked Kakubi's Pokeball out of his hand. So Ash sends Naganado back out and they start going band for band. Now, nah, but look at this animation though. This is giving X and Y run for its money. And this is coming from an X and Y fan. Naganado uses Dragon Pulse to distract Tapu Koko and hit him with an X Scissor. Then Tapu Koko powers through Sludge Bomb and electrocuted the crap out of Naganado. So it's out. Now it's up to the son of Arceus himself, Pikachu. It gets hit with Dazzling Gleam and starts using Quick Attack, but Tapu Koko keeps deflecting it. Pikachu smacks Tapu Koko to the ground and hits it dead in the chest. Pikachu really mean in business right now. I mean, he's the son of Arceus, so what do you expect? Then trapped him in an electro web, causing this whole thing. Like, how is somebody not dead yet? Now Tapu Koko wants to use Z moves, but they can't because they already did. So Tapu Koko was like, So Tapu Koko restores their Z power and gives Kakubi its signature Z crystal. Tapu Koko and Kakubi start doing their little Z move dance and summon this freaking colossal titan. What the fuck? Then Ash's Z crystal starts glowing. He puts his hat on Pikachu and they start charging up. So y'all know what that means? Let's get active. You might be an island guardian, but you don't got the power of God on your side. I am the son of Arceus. Taste this rainbow and put some respect on my name, ho. Come in. Hame! Ha! Oh, you must have heard me the first time. I said, taste this rainbow and put some respect on my name. Ha! Tapu Koko falls to the ground, which means Ash has won the battle. Now, that boy Ash was tired. And honestly, so am I. My voice is gone. Hey! Hey, y'all didn't see this, okay? Nah, dog, you lost to a mouse? I'm about to go tell everybody. Oh, my goodness. And yeah, that concludes the Alola League. Ash is finally champion after two decades. Glad to see my boy moving up. And I can't wait to cover what happens after. I am genuinely concerned for my voice once I start doing that. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day or night, depending on when you're watching this. And yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Later.